All right, good morning. It's uh, Thursday and um, life goes on, right? Um, we've got a, a new administration in the White House, and so that transfer of, of power seemed to go off without much uh, destruction or anything like that. So um, now it's back to business, and let's just rock on, right? Whatever happens in Washington happens up there. Um, I put up a, a, a prayer yesterday for our new administration. I'd encourage you to read it. It's on my Facebook page. It uh, was just a, a prayer that uh, God had kind of birthed in my heart to pray uh, for our new administration, uh, mostly that we'd be left alone and allowed to live a quiet, holy life, uh, which is in keeping with the reason why we pray uh, for our leaders, godly or ungodly, however you see that. And so we've been talking about that here at uh, Daily Dose for quite a while, right? Because Peter talked a great deal about how we should honor the emperor. And I remind you that that emperor was worse than either our past administration or our present administration, depending on who you think is good or bad. Uh, they, they're not even close to being like Nero. So, uh, And he said honor the, the emperor. So we're doing that. <clears throat> we're going to uh, live our life um, in the freedoms that we have in Christ. That's the ultimate freedom. It doesn't matter what what happens in, in a world in that sense. Uh, we Our eyes are on, on heaven things and, and on things we're going to have our minds seated in, in heaven where Christ is. So that's where we are. And I uh, hope you're having a great day. Um, we are um, hanging out here and uh, just doing some work and I'm writing a uh, kind of a program. Today's on my agenda to write a program for the UK, which is probably going to work for us as well. Um, they're in lockdown, and I think we're getting, we have a mask mandate now, and uh, maybe locking down, I'm not sure. So whatever that is, writing a program just to help parents know how to kind of create an environment where they can work, their family, their kids can work, their kids can have 30 to 45 minute time slots where they're not doing video or anything else, but they're being occupied as they learn things so the parents can get their work done. So I'm kind of excited about stretching our mindset in order to make that happen. Um, and, and it really is in keeping with, with what we're doing today. So we're, we're in the book of Colossians and <clears throat> I'm loving everything about that book and and what's going on in it. It's very similar to Ephesians, only it's like the Cliff Notes. So we're drawing heavily on Ephesians the past three days because he, Paul expanded these things about family in Ephesians that he didn't do here in Colossians. But uh, the, the, the reality of what we're looking at is that in Christ, you and I have everything we need. We're complete in him, right? Everything we need. I am complete. Uh, it's important that we, that we know that. I need nothing else besides Christ. Uh, I have complete victory. I have complete forgiveness. I'm completely made new. Uh, now, the process of, of getting rid of that is, is going on, and this is where we're talking about. We're, we're learning what it is to be filled with the Spirit, to let the Word of God richly dwell within us, to actively partner with the Holy Spirit, to put off sin, and to put on holiness. This is what God has called us to. And so uh, we, we don't play fast and loose with that. Where we see sin in our life, we root it out as fast as possible, right? I mean, we just don't play around with it. You, you do the same thing, I hope, right, in your home. If you if a co you see one cockroach, you don't just go, oh, well, hey, we'll you know, kill that one and maybe things go away. You start panicking, don't you? You start cleaning out the cabinets. You start trying to find the root of where that came in. Same thing if you got mice. So it's the same thing with sin. As soon as we see sin kind of rear its head, we have to put it down. Put off the old man, which is being corrupted by his deceitful desires. Be made new in the attitude of your mind. Put on the new self, which is created to be like God, in true righteousness and true holiness. And so it's practical things, right? We don't lie anymore. We just speak the truth. Not harsh truth. We speak it in love, but we, but we don't lie. We don't deceive. We don't cover up. We, we have no reason to. We're at peace with God. Therefore, we're, we're able to be as honest and transparent as we can with everybody else. Because if I'm, all, if I'm at peace with God, whether I'm at peace with you doesn't really matter, but I'm going to treat you right. Uh, I'm going to work with my hands, not hoarding all my stuff. That's put, I'm going to put that off. I'm going to put hoarding is now in my past. What I do now is I work and I labor for myself, but not just for me, so that I can give to others who have need. I'm going to be careful of what goes out of my mouth. Used to, it's like, well, just that's who I am. Well, not anymore. That's not who you are. Up until now, that may have been who you are. But now we're not just going to let our tongue wag and say goofy things and foolish things that hurt and bring detriment to others and, and just his trash stuff. We're going to put that off 
We're going to speak only words that bring edification and upliftment and honesty and truth to a situation. See how game-changing this is? So when we bring it now into the relationship of the home, this is where this is where the power is. Listen, if you want a better marriage, it starts right there. Put off the sin in your life. Put on holiness. Begin to treat your wife uh, like the scripture says. Begin to treat your husband like the scriptures tell you to. And you're going to see over time transformation take place. It, it's, it's truly remarkable what, what happens and what takes place. Uh, now, as we move today, we're beginning to look at kids, and we're going to see what he has to say about that. Now, there are very few words that he says here, but it's in the context, and that's what I'm trying to make sure we see. It's in the context of you and, you and me understanding that we have peace with God. Uh, this is what he said earlier. Let me read it for you. Uh, let the peace of Christ, therefore, as God's chosen people, verse 12, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other. Forgive one another. If any of you have a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. This is what we're putting on. We already talked about putting off things. This is what we put on. Then he gives us this. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. Listen, you're at peace with God. Let that dictate how you see everybody else. You have no reason to be angry at others because God's not angry at you. He forgave you. Therefore, just Carry that through to other people. Be at peace with them. Let that peace <clears throat> govern your own heart and your thoughts and your attitudes and your mindset. And then he says, let the message of Christ richly dwell within you. Let the word of God just be at home there. And, and so then he comes into this section, which he did in Ephesians as well, and starts talking about how to bring that into your marriage. How to bring the new self into your marriage. And so he says, wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting to the Lord. Now we saw that that, also is played out in 1 Peter and Ephesians and Colossians are the three areas, Titus for women, uh, chapter 2, uh, about the role of a wife. And so he says, this is what the new woman, the new person, the new you, this is how you act as a wife. We looked at that. Then he says, husbands, love your wives, don't be harsh with them. Peter and Ephesians both talk about the father or the husband in that sense. And so the, what does the new husband look like? What does a man who let the word of Christ dwell in his life, what does he look like? Man, he's lavishly in love with his wife. He sacrifices for her. He brings purity into her life. He cherishes her. Uh, he he seeks to understand her needs and anticipate what she wants so, she, so he can meet those needs. That's the new man. Can you imagine what would happen if, if if you as a husband started doing that, can you imagine what would happen if you as a wife just said, I'm going to trust and respect my husband and I'm, I'm not going to be nagging at him. I'm just going to, I'm going to live a good life, right? I'm going to live a good, holy life in front of my husband. That's transformative. Now he talks about kids and here's where we go today. And he says, this children, and he's going to, we're going to talk about dads and parents tomorrow, but today is about children. He says, children, obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord. Now, let's, let me read this in Ephesians because he kind of amplifies it just a tad. Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Right? Uh, so in, the, in Colossians, he says, which is pleasing to the Lord. Here he says, because it's the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother, which is the first command with the promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy life uh, on, long life on the earth. Now, Let's go back to Colossians, kind of break this down just a little bit. When he says children, it's the word <coughs> tekma. It, it means children under my authority in my home. There's, there's several different words for children. My older ones are, are children. I have a 39-year-old, 36-year-old, 35-year-old. I have a 21-year-old. They're not under my authority at that sense anymore. They should honor parents, but this specifically is for those kids who are in your home who you have charge over and who are dependent upon you. He, that's who he's speaking of. All children under parental oversight, right? So for me, Tammy, we don't really have any right now, but most of you still have kids at home. This is who he's talking about. Your kids, you should help them understand these principles. He says, obey. That's the term. Upakoete. It means uh, several things. It means to hear under. It's a weird term. It means to hear under, like to listen attentively so as to obey. 
That's what it means. Now, can you imagine your kids? Now, Dad, could, could you say that one more time? I want to make sure I get that right. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? That's the idea of what's going on. Not just, yeah, 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 whatever, Dad. Yeah, 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 I get, I get it. Yeah, I'll do it yeah, later. Not that. It's like, whoa, Dad, Dad speaking. We want to create that environment in our kids' lives. I know some of you are laughing right now going, man, you obviously don't know my kids. But that's the environment that we want to create where they hear under. In other words, they, they want to know what it is that you're saying. Now, we can do a lot to help that, and we're going to talk about that in a second. But it also means to look up attentively. That is, that, that they're conscious of, of every word, right? They, they, want, to, they want to please. They, so, so they listen attentively so that they can do. Um, it's much like, a, a, you know, if you're a high-powered, you know, CEO, politician, whatever, and you've got a personal assistant, uh, you know, and you say, hey, call so-and-so, you immediately write that down, times for all that kind of thing, so that there's, there's, you listen attentively to everything they say, so that you can be the best assistant that you can be. This is what he means when he says this about uh, upo coete. It means to, to look up attentively, to respond positively, right? Not push back. Not, well, wait a minute. That, this is not what it means to obey. There's not push back. It's just simply, all right, you're in charge. Right. So like at work, if my boss says go do something, we have a relationship where there is a little bit of give and take because the role that I'm in. But there are certain times when he said when they when they say something, I know exactly it doesn't really matter what I think about that. It's they're definitive in what they want. And it, you can tell it's really not up for discussion. This is what they want. Then we have one. I have one responsibility. I'm going to go do that because I'm a hupakate that I'm going to listen up under authority. That's the word that our kids need to understand. Then he says this. Do this in everything, small and big, small and big, right? Sometimes you go, oh, I didn't think you really meant that, Dad, or, or well, that really wasn't a big deal. I mean, take my toys up. I mean, I was busy, right? Take out the trash. Well, I mean, come on. It's, they're not even going to pick it up till tomorrow. I got time. None of that. In everything, our kids who are under our authority should listen attentively to hear under authority so that they can do it. And it's our responsibility to create that environment. But this is what he's talking about. And he says this, why? Because it pleases the Lord. It pleases the, our, if our kids want to please the Lord, they should do what, what we say. That, that's the bottom line. And we have to explain this to our children. That's why that, with a promise, children obey your parents and the Lord for it is right. And it is the first commandment with the promise that it may go well with you and your days may be long upon the earth. Now, in those days, the reason why that was added was because they were, if children were disobedient, they sometimes got unruly. They were taken out to the, uh, to the, to get the city gates and the elders there would stone that child to death if they deemed that to be correct. So there was a lot of motivation to say, hey, it's the first commandment with a promise. I won't let the city leaders stone you to death if you honor your mom and dad. And so um, this is this is the goal. Now, so the goal for you and me, let's talk about, because that's easy to say, but how do we get that into our kids? The goal is to teach them self-control. That, that's the whole point of the first few years of a child's life, is that they would learn self-control, right? In fact, when you look at what, Paul told Titus to teach the older men and the younger men and the older women and the younger women as he was teaching them how to pastor. He said, teach the young men to have self-control. Really just one thing. So what does it come down to? Us learning how to control ourselves. So the discipline phase should happen in that zero to five year old. A lot of you have kids older than that, and you may not have done an effective job of helping them understand that self-control. And you're living with the results of your lack of proper parenting. Doesn't mean it can't be fixed, but it means there now has to be a reset, a sitting down, a having a conversation and saying, look, this is what the word says that you should be doing. This is what the word says that I should be doing. And then we have that conversation. So if I say do these things, it's very important that you do them. Now, I would give you some a few tips. One is throw out that whole because I said so. That's an exasperated statement that parents make when they don't want to have to take the time to parent well. Or they need a lot more persistence because their kids tend to be a lot more rebellious. It doesn't matter. You, you slow your tone down. You're not harsh. 
You're very informative. This is what needs to be done. This is why I need you to do it, even if it's the simple thing, because you need to learn obedience or because you need to learn that this is the way life should be, that, that, that we treat others with respect who are in authority over us. Whatever conversation you have, that happens. We get so busy wanting to do everything else that we fail to follow up and our kids learn from that and go, well, dad didn't really mean go do that because when I didn't do it, he didn't do anything about it. And so this is why it's important that we do that. So what are some of these things that where where areas where we can kind of help them see this and begin to apply? Little things. Make your bed, right? I know you've heard that uh, the 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 uh, teaching that one of the generals did on on you know everything starts with making your bed. Just teach your kids, hey, it needs you to make your bed. And then you stick with that. Make your bed. Let the kids make their bed. Start with that. Start with clearing the table. Hey, after we eat, clear the table. Take them into the kitchen, right? Those should be simple things that become second nature to our kids where those things are what happen, right? That, that's part of it. Uh, please and thank you, right? In our home, it was always sir, yes sir, no sir. And everybody seems to poo-poo that these days. Like, you know, that's, that's just silly. That's old-fashioned. Well, you can call it whatever you want to. We call it respect in our house. And I wanted my kids to do that. That subtle statement immediately puts my child in a state of, of being respectful, which the scriptures speak long and hard of. So I say yes, sir, no, sir, to my owners, one who's 38 and one who's the oldest is like 63 because it's out of respect. Right. Uh, but I always say it with all the older people. Yes, sir. No, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Th those are common things. You can decide whether you want to do that or not. I'm telling you, you want to teach your kids those things because it will make it easier down the road for them to live respectfully to others. Um, and then and then, you know, helping bring the groceries in. These are little things. Right. Uh, the car pulls up. Hey, you know, come help me get the groceries. And you don't carry the major load. Let your children do this. It's important. This will help your children learn to obey. Uh, putting their clothes away. Uh, folding clothes. You know, man, those are some monotonous chores when I was a kid, man. I loved the towels because it felt like you were doing something big and you could be slow and easy with it. My sister, I, I, I'm, I'm making her do all the, the little you know folding T-shirts and getting all that stuff right. I know. I was a terrible child. Uh, cl clean the car out. Come on, you look at the back seat of most people's cars, it's nasty, right? And who do you sit back there? No. So make them clean that up. These are the little things. Pick up their room. Just hey, you don't have to, you know, we're not talking about a deep clean, just put stuff away. Now, always do this with patience, clear, non-condescending instruction. So crucial. Anyway, just this simple things from the Word of God I wanted to share with you today. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow. We're going to talk about parenting. Now, from our perspective, how we treat our children. Don't exasperate your kids. Come on. Be back for that, especially you men. Love you guys. Have a good one. I'll see you tomorrow.